Hi, welcome to the garden. I'm Diane Shelley. I'm a master gardener here in Hamilton County. And today we're going to talk about establishing a microjet system in your garden. I love to hand water. It's one of my favorite things to do to nurture those plants. But I kind of worry in the summertime about whether I'm putting enough water down and what if I want to go on vacation. So these microjet systems are a perfect answer for that. So let's come on over to the potting bench and I'll show you a few of the things that you're going to need for your system. Now microjets are great because basically you are installing a stake in your garden. This little spray head is going to put the water right where you need it with how much you need and how, how what shape of um, spray you need. So it makes it really convenient. You also can choose to do emitters and emitters are basically a drip system so that it's just dripping on individual plants. So you've got to do some planning ahead of time. So before you start running to your big box store, a hardware store or your irrigation supply uh, store, you need to have some planning to do. Um, what I did for this garden is I laid out a plan like this, shows you where my hose bib is and where I'm thinking about actually running my hose, what areas I need to get to, and once I have this laid out, it helps me to know how much hose I have to buy and also how many um, connectors I need to buy. So without this plan, it makes it a little bit difficult. You're kind of, you'll end up back at the store a few times. So now that I have a plan, the other thing to think about is, is my hose bib near my garden or am I gonna have to do a long run into my garden? And also, do I have enough water pressure? Now there's a fun little test that you can do, and that is to get a five gallon bucket and a hose, turn that water on as hard as it will come out, and time it. How long does it take you to fill a five gallon bucket? If you can do it in 30 seconds, you're in good shape. If it takes two and a half to three minutes, you probably don't have enough water pressure to run a system like this. So most houses are fine. You're going to be fine with it. But if you want to just take that precaution, that's a good way to do that. So do that plan. Um, you also then, once you get your plan, take your measurements and start to make a list. Um, you're going to need some connectors. So for instance, this is an example of the half inch pipe that you need. Um, it comes in rolls like this, usually 50 to 100 feet, so you can buy uh, something near what you need. Um, and I want to do a little plug for Saunders Irrigation Supply here because they have been wonderful at lending me some things to show you and they were wonderful at helping me set up and find some new answers to some issues I had here in the in the garden. So thank you so much to them. Um, you are going to um, need to turn corners or you know cut your pieces of hoses and connect. So you need some connectors. This is an elbow. This is a T. This is how I connect one piece of pipe to another if I run out and need another roll. So you'll need those. Um, so you need to count how many of those you need. We also I'll show you a, a, a consideration if you're going to do raised beds. Also, um, how many heads will you need? How many of these little um, stakes? This is a stake, this is a riser, and these are the heads. So what size do you need? In other words, um, do you need a 90 degree, a 180 degree, a 360 degree? So you want to sort of count, make an estimate there. Uh, and then the, <laughs> the big thing I will say to you is buy more than you need because it's so frustrating to get in the middle of a project and have to run to the store to get a little bit more. So save your receipts. You can always take it back, but always buy more than you need. All right, let's get started with some of the pieces that you're going to need. Um, on your hose bib, you can attach a clock or a timer right to your hose bib. I tend to like to have a manifold either with a dual or even a quad so that I can um, still use a hose or perhaps have other things attached to my hose bib at the same time. So this is an irrigation timer. And what this will do is allow you to set when you want to run your system, how long you want to run your system. I personally have two single clocks and then I also have a quad clock because I have four zones running off another hose bib. My whole 
uh, area is all done on these. I'm so excited about them. Not my lawn. This is not a lawn sprinkler. This is just for your garden. So with your timer, um, you want to be able to set this so that you can run it hopefully in the morning. If you run your irrigation system in the evening, that leaves a lot of water on your plants, which then don't get a chance to dry out before it gets dark. And that can tend to lead to, to some fungus. So I plan this for a time when I know that we're not taking showers, I'm not running the washing machine because this is all coming off the same source as your house. So I even start mine at five, six o'clock in the morning before I'm even up, my sprinklers are running and doing the job for me. All right, now let's take a look at some of the pieces that you're gonna need to put your system together. We've already talked about the hose manifold and the timer. These are some pieces that, uh, these are some tools that you'll need to actually punch a hole into the pipe so that you can put in your um, irrigation, uh, either your emitter or your stake. These are landscape pins and these will actually um, anchor your pipe down into the ground. I love having all these in containers. Go get some containers because these are the little heads and I have 90s, 180s, 360s. These are some connectors which I'll show you those and then my emitters and so they're organized like that which helps me a lot. This is spaghetti pipe and I'll show you how we're going to use that. That's a basically if you want to come away from your half inch pipe, um, you've got something off, uh, off the path a little bit and you need to get over there. Spaghetti pipe is a great option. In order for you to do some of this, you just need a few tools. This is crimpers, and that's used to uh, do this little uh, clamp right here. You'll need a pair of pliers or channel locks. Uh, something to cut the spaghetti pipe and the half inch pipe. An easy thing to do is either a box cutter, a pair of good scissors, or even your pruners will do the job. Um, these are connectors. We've talked about the T's, the elbows, the connectors. This is a fun little piece that you use to close off the end of your pipe and I'll show you how that works. Um, this is your stake is one piece. This is a riser which comes this length and you can cut into, into shorter pieces. I tend to like to have my um, emitters or my, my sprayers down low so that I'm not hitting my plants with a lot of water. And then the head that you screw on there. You'll see some of these as a stake. Um, I've, I've kind of switched over to these less uh, obvious uh, stakes in my garden. I like to have as little visible as possible. Um, these are invaluable. These are called goof plugs and when you put that hole in the wrong place you want goof plugs available so those are great and then one great tip is get a jar of water that you can heat up and it's going to make your life so much better all right let's get together uh, some of these parts and begin our system we start with our um, our manifold and we're going to connect our clock to the manifold it's easier to put some of this together and then put this up onto your hose bib um, when you're ready. All right, now this is an important piece. Um, this actually has a screen. This is a filter and this has a screen in it, which you can see down here. And this will take a lot of the, um, oh, the, the junk that's in the water, the minerals and some of the particles out so that you have a nice clean system that doesn't get um, clogged up too much. So that's going to go on the bottom of your clock or your timer. You want to snug these down. They don't have to be super, super, super tight, but you don't want to have any leaks uh, in it. So you want to orient the, this to the direction that you're going to head with your pipe or with your uh, irrigation system. So I've got that nice and tight. Next thing I'm going to do is to put a few connectors on here. So this is a piece that is going to connect from here to this piece, which is what the um, half inch pipe is going to fit onto. So this goes onto here like this. All right, this piece is gonna go into here, but because I don't have a rubber gasket in here and I want a nice tight fit, I need to use some Teflon tape. Teflon tape looks like this when you purchase it. You just pop a little ring off the top and there's your tape. Now, since I am going to um, go around like this in my with my um, uh, threading, 
then what I want to do is to actually put my Teflon tape in the same direction as I'm going to screw this in. And there's just a couple of times around, making sure it's nice and tight. You can pull it off, but it always is a mess, so I like to cut it. Make sure it's nice and tight into the threads like that. And now I can actually, oops, sorry, I can actually put that in there and it's going to be a nice tight dripless fitting. All right, now we're ready to put some um, half inch pipe on. I have actually taken some water, heated it up in the microwave so it's it's hot, it's not boiling, but it's hot. And just actually a few seconds, 15, 20 seconds in the water is gonna get it warmed up enough so boy, it makes it a lot easier to put on. So I'm going to crimp this onto here. This doesn't have threads. So I need to put my clamp onto here. I'm going to twist my hose onto there. You have to use a little pressure. This is where you do your workout. <laughs> all right, so this you can see now that this is all the way up to there. I'm going to put my clamp right here and to use my crimpers, which are these. And all I'm going to do is to take this, and you see this? And I'm going to just crimp that like that, nice and tight. So now, that's on there. It's not going anywhere. And now I'm off and running. So I'm going to attach this to my hose bib and I now have a clock and I have my filter and I'm off and running. All right, let's go over and I'll show you how to set up some of this hose pipe. First of all, what you want to do early in the process is take this bundle of half inch pipe and in the warmest part of the day, hopefully, lay this out on your lawn because if you don't, it will curve around and, and uh, kind of have a mind of its own. So laying that out is going to save you a lot of grief. Now, what I wanted to show you is that I'm doing a garden with raised beds. So I can't just do a drive by and hope to make it into the bed. I need to put some fittings here. This is a T. It comes up into an elbow. I actually have a valve in here. Um, that My original thought was I want to be able to turn some of these boxes off when I'm not growing anything in there. Um, it's a little bit of duplication because these wonderful little microjet heads actually have a way for you to control whether it's spraying at all or a small spray, a large spray, you can adjust it. So I could have just had these on and, I, and turn each one of them off, but I can actually then take this and um, turn off the whole box if I want to with this valve. So what I wanted to show you is how to connect some of these. Now these are a couple of different types of tees. I started out with the first systems I ever did with this type. Um, I find these are a little bit hard to work with, hard to get my uh, pipe in there and I tended to have a lot of blowouts times when the pipe would just disconnect and I was so happy to find these power locks. So I'll show you how these work. Um, I have, you'll notice that I've put my end into that hot water, help myself out, look at this a little warmed up. And all you do is to put your pipe onto the connector get it down there nice and tight and then take this part and screw it down onto your pipe and boy that's a great join okay let's go show you how to actually put these pieces together to get your stakes ready um, these are the little stakes that go into the ground then you have your risers. We talked about cutting them in half, maybe to put them a little bit lower. So all you do is to take the end, and there's a little threaded area right there. We're going to just turn that until this riser hits the bottom of that area.
There's no threads inside this tubing. It just tends to want to catch there. This is where it's going to connect into the half inch pipe. This is the part that's going to go in the ground. And then this is your riser and you're going to put a little uh, microjet on the top here. So you'll need to decide whether you want um, a 90 degree, 180 or 360. And then just screw in, you'll see this has a little threaded area. So you just screw that in right there. and you have a stake ready to go. So now we need to attach it to our half inch pipe. And this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna take our tool and punch a hole. Now a couple things to consider. If I want to have my um, spray going one way, I don't necessarily, well I don't wanna take this stake and have it coming out the top. <laughs> I need it to come out the side. So which side? Do I want it this side or this side? In this tool, you'll see this little piece that pops out. That's what's going to cause the hole. So what I do is I remember blue side is the side of the hose that I want to punch. So I'm going to put this onto, see if you can see that. I'm going to put this onto there and I'm going to punch this on the side, not the top. Make sure I get a good, nice hole in there. Okay. See the hole now it's easy. Just pop this in there. You'll even hear it snap. Snap, and you are ready to go. So now this is going to pump, uh, put down into the ground. And then this is a little adjustable. It's usually off. So when you start your system, you'll have to go around and adjust these, how much you want spraying into your garden in that area. So that's how you connect those. Now, on some uh, systems, you may want to use emitters. Emitters are a little bit different. They, this is going to spray an area of your garden. Emitters are going to be right there on top of your plant. So if you would like to do emitters, it's almost like a drip system. And you can buy um, different types of emitters. Some of these are um, half a gallon per hour. That means it's going to drip and you're going to get half a gallon in an hour. You can buy one that's a gallon per hour or two gallons per hour. And you're going to put this right near your plant. It really only has a six inch circumference on the area that it's going to water. So you you need to be able to get right in on top of your plant with your pipe and put your emitter in there. So same principle. All you're going to do is take your, your hole punch, punch your hole and put your emitter in there. It has a little spike and again it's going to have a little pop when it does it. Okay. So there's your emitter. Now if your plant is far away then you can use spaghetti pipe. It comes in a roll like this. So you just cut what you need and then this will just pop onto your emitter right there and then run over to your plant. In order for this to stay where you want it, you want to take a landscape pin and pin it down and that will keep your plant um, water, this is spaghetti pipe right on your plant so you can actually do it right by your plant. Um, if you uh, have a plant that you just don't feel is getting quite enough um, water through that emitter, you could put another one right here next to it. Or as your plant grows, you might move up to a one gallon emitter. So you can always add on to this as you go along or if you feel like you need to make some changes. And remember, if you really mess up and you needed your hole over here but you put it here, that's when these goof plugs come in handy. You just take a goof plug and it's going to pop into that hole and it won't leak and you can go over here and put another hole. Another great way to use spaghetti pipe is you can actually run from your system into a, a container, a pot, or in this case, I was having trouble with keeping my bird bath full. So I actually have the spaghetti pipe connecting over to my half inch pipe, and then I've just run it up kind of quietly. And then I put a little mister head. There are misters that you can get as well. Mister head on the top, anchored it with the rock where you don't really see it. And now my birds have water. Okay, we've learned how to put a lot of the pieces together. Now we're ready to blow out our system, which means just turn on your clock, make sure that it um, all uh, blows out any dirt or anything that got caught up in it, and you're ready to 
put your ending on all of your ends. So easy way to do it, just take this little figure eight, place it onto your pipe, run it down a little way so you've got some room, bend it over like you used to do in the hoses in the old days, you know, keep the water, and then just feed that little piece up. And all that does is keep that crimped. If you run out of these or you don't have them, another thing you can do is to um, uh, put a zip tie on there real tight and that'll do the same thing but these are real convenient and you can take them on and off Two. all right now you've got your system installed and it's time to set your clock you can have it off for those times when you're just not running it or put it on auto that means it's going to run according to your schedule um, but there's some things that you need to set first of all set the clock what time is it right now that's not what time it is right now <laughs> and you do that by just pressing up or down and note that we have a.m. and p.m. What time would you like to start this? For instance, do you want to start at 6 o'clock or 5.46 a.m.? And once it's, you know, yeah, that's where I'd like to start it. How long would you like it to run? Most of these microjet systems, 10 minutes is plenty. So you can do 10 minutes or less or longer, whatever. And how often would you like to run it? Every day? Would you like to run it every other day, every third day? This particular clock, you can actually run it every 12 hours. So there are some options on some of these clocks and you may wanna check that out when you're purchasing your clock. What kind of, of uh, um, opportunities do you have? And then once you've set all that, then you're gonna put it on auto and off it's gonna go. Now sometimes, for instance, I'm gonna show you how this system is gonna run. It's not gonna be within the time that I'm running my system. So I need to use manual, which means that I'm going to say, run this manually, and I'd like it maybe just to run for five minutes. So I'm going to go down till I hit five minutes. And actually what happens is you'll wait and you hear click, and then there it is. And now the system will be running when it's connected to the hose. All right, now we're going to run the system and show you how to adjust the heads. This is, these are my four zone clocks, so it's a little bit more complicated than what we've been showing you, but it's a really easy system. Looks pretty much like what we just did. I would like to just run this system for a few minutes, so I'm gonna press the manual. Tell it that I want just the first zone to run, and I would like to run that for just about a few minutes to show you what goes on. So hopefully we'll hear that same click. There it is. And now we'll go walking to the garden and I'll show you how to do some adjustments. One. All right, in my garden, I have actually um, uh, put the half inch pipe around. You'll notice that I have leaves or mulch over the top, which is a nice way to sort of disguise all this hose running. And then this is a 90 spray head. You'll notice it's just giving you a 90 spray. This one over here is a 180 like this. And you'll notice I can change this. If I don't want this to run, or I just want it to run, you know, I don't want it to overshoot the box. Maybe I only want it that much. Maybe I don't want it to run at all. I can turn it off. Or I can put it on full blast. So I have options as to how I'm gonna run this. You're going to go around and adjust every head, make sure it's actually, yeah, pointing in the right direction because inevitably you're going to put it on and it's going to be doing that So you want to make sure that you just turn it enough to get it shooting where you want um, And it's a lot easier when you have some plants in here because you're going to see where your plants are what's blocking um, And so this this works really well for me One all right, so you've got your system set up and uh, the, the irrigation is doing the work for you, so I think I'm just going to enjoy a cup of coffee and watch my garden grow. Thanks for joining us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.